Oh, got the mic. How to grow your chat. Warning. You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. So we're talking about chest. You're not gonna like this. You're gonna be so pissed at this because the chest is the worst trained body part in the human body. And it's the one guys care about the most. How do I know this? Because they use the priority principle for chest. Monday is International Chest Day. They go in ice cold from high school and they go in a bench, flat bench with a barbell for three reps or less terribly. They keep doing this bad habit and they don't get hurt, which positively reinforces bad behavior. And then eventually they tear their shoulder and they're like, I used to bench so much and then I hurt my shoulder, blah, blah, blah. And then you have to, and they say that to everyone who they pass by for the rest of their life. Or you can watch this video and learn what not to do. So the number one thing you don't do is a flat bench. Mother fucking ever. Never do flat barbell bench. It is the dumbest fucking exercise. Unless you're competing in powerlifting, you do not flat bench. So that being said, there's two basic prep movements. There's a press and there's a fly. Press, fly. That's it. There's two movements for chest. It's all it fucking, that's all it does. And then the other thing is angles. People are like, you gotta do decline for upper chest. You gotta do incline for upper chest. You do middle for total chest. Take your arms, squeeze your chest and move them through a range of motion. And the place where you feel the chest the best, but you don't feel your anterior delts for me is right here. And then if I turn them in a little bit, this is called external rotation. If I externally rotate them about 45 degrees, and then I come back, notice my arm, my humerus, this bone is at a 45 degree angle. With, you know, if we were to take my spine and then move it over to where the glenohumeral joint is, it's about a 45 degree angle. If I come up here, I'm gonna get more anterior delts and middle chest fibers. The chest fibers line up with the humerus right like this. If I come here, my humerus is gonna line up with the clavicle. With my shoulders retracted, my arms come right about here. That's where I get the most chest contraction, which makes the number one way to train chest is a press in your strength groove with your arms at approximately between 80 and 45 degrees, somewhere in this zone. It's different for every person. Now, what I found is the best way to train your chest is probably dumbbells because I can come down here where it's comfortable. This is not comfortable. This is comfortable. Come up. This is no longer comfortable, but this is. So I can come and twist. The dumbbells are not gonna be good as a contraction position movement. So although the dumbbell press is probably the best thing you can do for your chest, it's not, it's great for the stretch position, it isn't great for the contracted position. The other thing that's great is the hammer strength, double converging arm. You could train it unilaterally, but there's no reason to because both of the arms have their own weights. So your chest is getting worked independently. Plus when you contract this side, there's a signal sent to this side. When you contract this side, signal sent to that side. So these double converging. Now, of course, we're wreaking a really complicated way of just doing dumbbell presses. It's like you can have a $10,000 piece of machine that does the same thing as $100 worth of dumbbells. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Fusion Regenerative Therapies, where I am the director of human performance. This is the practice in which I practice medicine. I uh, will be able to order you blood work and read your blood work and help you with therapy as needed based upon the results of your blood work. Please click the link to get a consult with me and I can help you optimize your performance. Thank you. The only time you'd want to pre-exhaust with the fly motions is if you're going to, if you have better shoulders and or arms, then you have a chest. When your chest is a lagging body part relative to your shoulders, your arms, that's when the fly movements matter and you would pre-exhaust with them. So using cables allows you to work the contracted position really well. So here's the thing, ready for this? This is how we can make the cables do everything we want them to do. You're facing, but pretend you're on a clock and you're facing 12 o'clock and to your right is three o'clock and to your left is nine o'clock. Stand so that when you stick your arms out to your sides, they're just behind the stacks. So almost like the stacks are at two and 10 o'clock. So then when you bring your arms, there's no tension really when you're stretched out. But when you come together, there's maximum tension. That's really gonna work the contracted position of your chest. 
that would be like set one. Then set two, step forward, so that the cables are basically gonna be at nine and three, bring them together. Now we're working the power position. It's heaviest, not in this position like it was before when they were at two and 10, it's heaviest when they're at this position, the power position, 50% of the range of motion, when cable stacks relative to you are at nine and three. And then for the last set, step forward again, so that they're at four and 10, so that they're really stretched at the back, and then they're virtually weightless at the final position. So what I'm saying is, if you have to pre-exhaust your chest, pre-exhaust with the pec deck or the cables, then move on to dumbbell presses. If you don't need to pre-exhaust the chest, do the hammer strength, then do dumbbell flies. That's it. How do we work this into a program? My suggestion would be if you're gonna train this twice a week, you have two push days. Remember, push, pull legs, off, push, pull legs. One day you do the hammer strength, converging arm machine, and then the second exercise is the dumbbell fly, or you could still do the pec deck or the cables. I just think the dumbbell fly would make more sense because you're, if you're doing it second, it's just a stretch move. There's no way you're gonna get contraction out of that. Demonstration of tempo, one. One, two, one, two, three. Hold, one, press. Whereas flies, we're gonna sit in it, come up, slow, sit in it, come up. It's almost the same. It's just we're, there's a micro pause at the top, a long pause at the bottom. Whereas if we're pushing, it's a long pause at the top, a slow pause at the bottom, only on the hammer strength. With the dumbbells, that wouldn't make any sense because there's no tension at the top. X push one, we're gonna do incline hammer strength, press, then dumbbell flies. And then on the other day, you do dumbbell press and you would do cable or pec deck fly. That's it. That is it. This is the video. Hope you like it. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. When you subscribe, click the bell so you can get notifications. All right, toodles.